were uh, supposed to evacuate. So I saw come across just recently the tsunami warning takes effect at 9.30. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm assuming the alarms are going off ahead of the, the tsunami warning. And is she right about 10.15? Is that the right time there right now? Yeah. Is it two hours? Yeah. Two hours, right? Well, yeah, and they were supposed to go off with it at 9.45, but I didn't hear them close to my hotel. Uh, I was already on, on the road at that time. Okay, Bill, well, listen, we're going to keep you on the phone. Don't go away. We want, we want to continue to talk to you. Uh, I want to make sure, of course, that you're okay and you and Helen are doing all right. Uh, thanks so much for staying on. Do not hang up, okay? I'm all clear. All right. He's going to stay with us. Cindy Frello back with us now uh, from the West Coast Tsunami Center. Uh, you have some new information for us about the, perhaps the tsunami watch that we're feeling here on the West Coast? Well, you're still on a tsunami watch, which is good. <clears throat> and I expect you to be so for several hours. But we did uh, upgrade the magnitude to an 8.9. And I have a preliminary forecast for LA, okay. which is right around a half a meter. And so what that means for you is, is you might have some um, really unpredictable currents and possibly some strange water behavior along the coastline. So you know what, what do you have for Hawaii? We have a reporter in Hawaii right now. One of our pieces is in Hawaii. And sure. I, yeah, I just thought you guys put out a warning at, for 9.30 in Hawaii. What's the latest? Excuse me, I'm sorry. I haven't had any water since the start again. <laughs> um, right now, Hawaii is in warning and their sirens are sounding. And so that means that the Hawaiian civil defense and their local emergency managers are currently evacuating communities that are close to the water. Um, our preliminary forecasting shows that, that, that they are expecting some serious water, certainly anywhere between one to five meters of water. Cindy, let's talk about what's happening uh, across the Pacific because other areas are affected. Uh, we hear there are evacuations down the Philippines, coastal areas, but also there are warnings for New Zealand and Australia. Uh, what areas are con uh, concerned are you worried about and what do you think is happening right now in different countries? Well, I, I think everybody's motivating, and one thing that's amazing about the South Pacific is, is that tsunamis are no stranger to them. It's, it's something that they have um, endured frequently. I, I'm looking at the energy map for this event, and it looks like the main theme of energy, sadly, is going straight for Hawaii. And most of the South Pacific to the west looks like they're, they're more in the moderate zone. Um, doesn't mean they won't see some wave action this evening, and I imagine that they're all preparing. So you're saying there's strong energy heading toward directly toward Hawaii. Yeah. They're going to see waves as high as five meters. Possibly. Okay, what does that devastation look like on the Hawaiian Islands? How far in does it go? Oh, you know, it depends on which beach. Every beach has a different topography and, and the underwater bathymetry, which is just the slope and the shape of the bay underneath the water, it really determines how the tsunami arrives. So it can arrive just like a fast flood. That, that is usually what we see. Um, other times, it's really innocuous. It's just, you know, it, um, it, it, it may fill a harbor super fast. You, you, you actually don't even see any moving water, and then all of a sudden, your harbor's a lot deeper. So um, you can actually come in like a bore tide, like you see so often on television. What about ships in the area? What about military ships? Sure. Sure, our recommendation to ships is that uh, if, if we're expecting, if we have them in mourning, or even if we have them in an advisory, we'd like ships to go out to deep water if there's time. If there's not time, then they should forget the ship and evacuate. Can you reflect back on the army and what's going on there? How, how high are those waves? What, what was the damage that we saw there? What are we looking at there in terms of damage compared to, say, Hawaii, that you're looking at possibly five meters? What happened and is happening in Japan? Oh, in Japan, the damage is devastating. I mean, I can't even begin to guess how, how much. It's, it's absolutely a disaster for them. Five meters, three meters. We, we've just seen a report um, coming from, from you guys that was way higher than three meters. Right, right. And I think I heard at, at one location they had a six meter wave. Six meters. But Hawaii is looking at possibly five meters now. Yeah, most most of the forecast of wave heights for Hawaii are just above a meter, but there's there's a couple that look a little higher. But we'll be able to refine that if we get more water data in. What about ships that might have been in that area of Japan, close to the epicenter? Sure, sure. They, you know, some, 
post post tsunami surveys often find ships kind of sometimes even a mile inland. So, you know, they they get taken for a run with it as well. Well, we saw that, I don't know if you saw the video, and we're looking right now at a fire that's burning, but yeah. also the airport on the right screen. They got enough warning, apparently, to get those airplanes out of that region. It is a smaller airport. But we did see video of two ships, ships, I mean, big ships, not the small fishing boats, big right. ships turned over onto their side. Mm -hmm. That's well, fairly common. And the water came in, and apparently the water went back out. Might more water come back in and do even more damage? Oh, easily, absolutely, and oftentimes it's the water that's retreating that does the most damage. But, you know, the thing to think about is, is, is the energy that's translated from an earthquake of this magnitude, and how much energy is actually being transported through the water. It's, you know, water isn't compressible, so it, it travels through without really any impact whatsoever. So a magnitude 9 earthquake is enough energy to power the planet for 90 years. The entire planet. Well, you know, Lucy Jones talked about, she called it a seduction zone, where it, it actually changed the ocean floor. This is a very long fault. And the good news for us, really, is that there's not a fault like this in California that is this long. But the concept of changing the ocean floor is just incredible to me. It is incredible, and actually offshore LA has some very, very interesting faulting in geology there. So, I, you know, even a magnitude 7 there might be pretty messy for your region.